So you want to know the result of my stupidity from some time ago? I don't blame you. First of all, I'm required to disclaim, do not try anything discussed in this video that is tried by a tried true professional will get prosecuted by the law. It is unruly, it is dangerous, and yet I don't want you to hurt yourself over my own stupidity. Thank you. Disclaim is over. Before we start, hello everyone, my name is Jisa Hazi. If you haven't seen this video here, I recommend you go watch it. If not, I'll give you a quick brief, kind of like rundown of what went down in that video just so you kind of understand where we're coming from in this video here. Now, yeah, buddy kind of accidentally break into New York City Hall. Yeah. We went to go and explore the abandoned New York City Hall train station. It is beautiful. The architecture is much more different. It is an older style station. Most of the stations now and even then may have been just plain old walls, plain and simple. This station, they went all out, engraved walls, beautiful architecture. The way it's laid out is just remarkable. In all honesty, if all the train stations in New York City were kind of set up like that, it might be a little bit of a different scenario going on with the transport. But listen, I pay my taxes out of control where they go. Politics aside, we went to go explore this abandoned train station. We didn't intentionally enter City Hall. We didn't step foot in City Hall. We opened the door to City Hall, to be clear. That's what happened. We cracked open the door maybe this much, maybe that much. Just, you know, we can't really get in there, you know, my head isn't even big enough to get through there, but that's what we did. Now, with the size of how we opened the door is very clear. It's very obvious that we didn't even step foot in there. We didn't even get an arm's reach in there. We didn't even fathom to even think of the thought of going up there to even look left or look right and even process what was up there. When we cracked open the door, all we hear is, yeah, and you know what that sound tells anyone who hears that sound? Rock. Unfortunately, unfortunately, that alarm we did set off did set off a string of events that did string over the course of the next two months. Before we even get into that, let's take this from a step back from a policeman's perspective. Someone just tried to break into City Hall. Who would try to break into City Hall? What is someone's intentions of getting into City Hall? Are they trying to destroy the city? Are they trying to do this? Is it the Joker? Is it the Riddler? I don't know. Is this a terrorist? I don't know. But, you know, if someone's trying to break into City Hall, I think it's safer to assume the worst more than it is to assume it's not. Because who in the right mind would try to do such a thing? We didn't really even intentionally try to do it. It was just kind of like the only door there that wasn't open. So we we're like, yeah, might as well open it, right? It is what it is. Just to be clear, the police were investigating a potentially deadly terrorist, praise murderer, enemy of the state with no leads, no nothing, slapped on the table, urgent, this needs to be done. But I forget to mention it was City Hall, so the cops can't really push these cases aside. They are forced to do it. They're forced to actually work and do their jobs, unfortunately. So now I don't know this. There's a case being brought to me. Technically, I don't know this. I'm just living my life. Okay, this happened. I got out of there, went to sleep, woke up. Okay, I do this, I gotta do that. Oh, I gotta get food. Oh, it's laundry. Oh, I gotta go to work. You know, we just casually went on living life. That's what you do. You know, when you do something, you keep doing what you're doing. You know, you keep persevering. There's, listen, stuff happens. You gotta keep it pushing. Now, this is when we started traveling a little bit more state to state. I started going to Massachusetts a lot more. We shot this video here, pretty much our first car meet when we went over there. Phenomenal time, recommend the video. I'm not gonna get into that there, that's a little irrelevant. But I went over there, I went over there for a second time, about a month after, this is now the second month after this whole ordeal kind of went down and I get a knock to the door. No, I didn't get a knock to the door in Massachusetts. I got a knock to the door in New York the first night I didn't come home. That night was the first night I actually stayed overnight over there. So I was sleeping over there that next morning, knock on the door, boom. My grandma opened the door. I spoke to my grandma, gave him the card. Hey, we're looking for Jason, blah, 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 yada, 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 boom. Called me, notified me. Hey, the local PD is looking for you, Jason. What is your ass doing now? What can you possibly be in now? Get your ass home. You need to handle your business. This is not, you know, please come in, listen. Handle your business, go back if that's what you want to do. Don't be slacking off on this. This is actually something that could potentially be important. You live here, live like it. Nonetheless, I left early, came home. I didn't really know what I had in store for me because one, I was doing cars versus cops, doing a lot of car stuff. Two, I'm doing a lot of urban exploring stuff. I got numerous videos, numerous locations. It wasn't looking too bright for me. It can be one or the other. I personally don't want to deal with one or the other, but you know, we have to. So now I'm going in, trying to figure out what's going on without really knowing what's going on. I'm kind of lost. I didn't really know what was going on. I knew like, look, it, there was a warrant out for my arrest. They just come and get me. So all I did was once I came home, I let them come to me. I stayed home, 
kept doing my errands and whatnot when I came back. Stayed doing my thing. Day two comes along. That's when I get the phone call. Two comes along, I get a call to my personal number and it's actually two detectives that asked me if I was you, you know, if I was me, where I am, what I'm doing. That day I woke up late, so I was kind of distraught. And now I'm like kind of caught off guard because I kind of forgot about the cop thing in the back of my head. So I was like kind of distraught, like what's going on? I was pretty much sitting right here when I got the phone call, like literally in this chair at this desk. And I told them I wasn't home. Listen, I had to brush my teeth, wash my face, take a shower. Let me process a little bit before you come in and knock on my door and do all this. Listen, shoot me a text, I'll respond. Give me a call. Listen, I'm gonna give it a second because if I'm busy, I'm busy. I'm gonna call you back. Called them back an hour later after I did all those things and told them, look, I'm here. Where are you guys? Let's talk, let's discuss this, let's figure this out. First of all, before I continue, let me tell you this. There's one thing you never wanna do in life is that's going into a situation like this without any form of legal representation. Now keep in mind, I didn't have a warrant out for my arrest because if that was the case, they would have just taken me in handcuffs immediately. There wouldn't be any discussion involved. And two, I didn't know what was the case. And I know, you know, they don't have a warrant out so they can't just arrest me. I can just plead the fifth and not discuss anything. I can just sit there silently until they pretty much admit, okay, this is why you're here. And then I can decide whether or not I want to go plead the fifth and call a lawyer, get a legal team involved and do that and go that route of things. Keep in mind, don't do that without any legal representation. Let me tell you, when I told them I was home in this, like, kid you not, they told me, oh, I'm two blocks over. I step outside the house, boom, pulled up right in front of the house, hopped in. We like went up like a block and a half, pulled over to the side. I was in the back. There's another cop in the back with me and another detective up in the front seat, pretty much driving a car. At this point, I'm sure by the conversation that we had over the phone, my overwhelming resilience, my overwhelming acceptance of cooperating and also not being, they can clearly see that I wasn't really a technically enabled threat. Someone that went out with intent to go blow stuff up or break things, I'm sure now that they can clearly see that. So, you know, there, there's a little bit of a relief. You know, there, there was a little bit of tension that was just slowly, you know, coming down the more we, you know, I was in the car and pretty much expressing that, you know, I wasn't really a threat. You know, it's, it, it's the cop's job. I could have been, obviously I'm not, but to them, I could have been. So it's good for them to, you know, dictate this, this and that. Obviously I want them to feel safe while I feel safe at the same time. So I'm also not gonna put myself in any two extreme situations. Come to the question, um, that they kept asking me repeatedly and it was, have you been anywhere that you shouldn't have been lately? Now, this is a very loose question. This is a question that, you know, they tend to ask to pretty much see if they can get you to admit to anything else. Um, so I stuck with my guns because that means they're not, they're trying to get you to confess to what they have you for and get you for anything that they can get you for on top of that. So, you know, you plead the fifth, you don't say anything. I don't know what I did. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Like I said before, between me, the Cars vs. Cops content, the Urban Exploring content, you know, I technically did have a lot of stuff going on. So I wanted them to admit to me, obviously, like I said before, that was the whole point going into it. So I played my role, I did what I did. After repeatedly, repeatedly saying, look, I don't know, they finally broke the cave. They said, look, we don't really have any technical solid evidence to really get you to put you away for this, but we can make your life annoying. We can make your boy's life annoying because you know, if you saw the video, you know that I was with one of my boys. We can make your boy's life annoying, proceed to say his name and then we continue to go on and go forth. And he said, look, like you're also technically not arrested right now. You could go get a lawyer if you wanted to. Pretty much indirectly reading me my Miranda just so you know I'm aware of the circumstances. Um, but you know, you can't legally read the Miranda unless you're under arrest. See, you see where I'm getting at here? They're not directly telling me, but it's more of like an applied thing that it's like, look, like we got some paperwork. We know you're not Osama bin Laden. We got paperwork. Let's just get this over with. We'll help you out just to help close this thing out. And the longer you keep it open, the more of a headache it is for us. We can handle this quick and clean. You won't really have to get your family involved. Although my door did get knocked on and my family did get involved. I guess technically penalized when you get home by your family and whatnot or judged and such. So what they told me is pretty much by saying that is, look, you're not looking at anything that will stick to your record as long as you come now and get this done quick. We'll make sure that you're well taken care of. This is criminal trespassing. It is something that'll be on your record. It is something that you can't face like up to like two weeks. To, I think it's like 21 days or something like that served. It's not a long time, but also, you know, we don't want to have that on our record. And also we don't want to have any time served. We want to stay free men.
that's our objective. Let's say three men come to agreement. We agree on a day that would be best fit for me, at least for me on my schedule. They get they're paid to do that. I have to work with my schedule to come down to the to come down to the station and pretty much just fill out the paperwork and just get it over with. And we went and we agreed on that Thursday. And that was the plan. That day was Tuesday, so about two days from then. I forgot what I had to do the day after, honestly. Probably was some random stuff that I didn't really have to do, but I just said, screw it, I'm gonna just do it on Thursday. I don't really feel like doing it right now. So we agreed on Thursday. It was pretty cool. I don't I don't really want to blow up their spot or anything, but like the precinct was like in a train station. I think it was kind of ironic that what happened was I got caught up in a train station. The precinct was in a train station. So I lose track anyways. I, I get in there, my pops drops me off, obviously kind of pissed. Went in, I got processed, get my fingerprints taken, mugshot shot taken. If anyone knows how to pull those, please let me know. I can't seem to find it online anywhere. That could be a good thing. So I'm not really complaining. After, you know, the processing, they put me in a cell. They kept questioning me. Went back, back and forth for some time, surprisingly, on like the whole car question. Looking back on it now, it was kind of weird thinking about it, how like uh, I was predominantly getting asked car questions. You know, one of the detectives was talking about how we had an actor. He was into cars. He was kind of asking me, what do I want to, you know, what should I do? Where should I go? Uh, personally, one, it's a cop. Two, as much as I would love to assist in putting modifications on your car, I cannot tell you where to put modifications on your car. All I can tell you is down pipes in a tomb. And that's what I did. In all honesty, I actually got asked that question quite a few times over the course of like the whole conversation. It's kind of like a mental thing. They'll get you going and going and going, and then they'll try to slip one in so you don't you don't subconsciously realize it, and then you continue that into the flow of conversation, and then you end up slipping it up. I don't know if that was necessarily the tactic that was at play, but that is a tactic. I don't know if they were really trying to get me on that. Um, a civilian, fair the police, asked me about car related stuff. I have cars with cops up there. That's not the most police friendly content to be made. Looking back on it now, although I definitely knew the essence of their visit, it's really kind of weird, you know, thinking back about the car questions, the car related questions, it kept cycling back to it too, like within the conversation. Our conversation, now you have a flow going, so you have less time to think before you speak. So then they'll like slip it in there and then, you know, maybe you slip up, maybe you don't, I don't. That's why, you know, I felt comfortable enough to know that if I went in there without the representation that I would be kind of okay. Because if they just try to screw me, that's when, you know, you get the legal team in. And I did have, you know, a lawyer on standby if they really needed a call. So it wasn't really that much of a pressing issue. And it's, you know, like I said, I wasn't really in there doing anything wrong. I wasn't vandalizing anything, stealing anything, breaking anything, blowing anything up, setting anything on fire, committing any other crimes. I was just looking at the walls. Quite literally, as, the, as crazy as that sounds, that's really all we were doing. <laughs> Pretty much after that whole processing situation and being in the cell going through questioning for hours so that's when they broke down the legal terms um this is that's when they said look we're gonna leave your boy alone he's scot free but we're not gonna bother him we're not gonna know him you took the pain you'll just deal with it you're okay two we're gonna leave we're gonna seal this thing for employers employers won't be able to see you know you got this charge or anything it won't affect your jobs but law enforcement can't see it and the fine print was, I can't get caught for, I believe, two years, kind of like a probational period. Pretty much face double the charges, so pretty much I'd face the charge that I'd be getting. I think it would be like an immediate admission to guilt, and then the previous one would be an admission to guilt as well. Now here I am, two years later, this is my second video ever, and it is my craziest video ever. Do I have any takeaways? Don't upload criminal stuff to your YouTube channel with your full government name. Now, some people are gonna try to roast me for that. There are probably already comments who've commented before reaching this point of the video who said that is a dumb thing to do. It's public knowledge. People have been posting this stuff before me. Um, there's, I don't know a random wizard under a bridge who says, go to this spot, follow the train's whistle. It will take you to the abandoned train station. No, there's none of that. There's only research. I figured, you know, if they're okay, I should be okay, right? Luck of the draw, maybe they're the feds, maybe not, I don't know. That kind of itched me the wrong way coming forward, you know, potentially thinking about doing any type of urban exploring. I definitely would maybe potentially try to do, you know, urban exploring in a permitted space, of course, um, but that's future. I don't have to worry about that right now. That's not something I'm gonna be planning on doing any within the next three months. So I'm gonna leave that at bay, leave that for something I think about in the future. It'll have to be something that really, you know, sets ablaze that fire in me because right now that fire was ablaze. It got put out by a fire extinguisher, two ton press and a catapult into the ocean. So it's really hard to get that thing ignited. But if it's something that, you know, it just itches me the right way, I know I'll work nevertheless to just 
get it done, get the permits and whatnot. So after the, all the random nonsense and chit chatting and lessons learned, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. I really got to get better at this. I never self plug myself. Hit like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. Be safe. Be suave. Don't illegally publicly trespass with your boys. See you in the next one.